Hey Stitchy friends, this is Lana, Silly Notion Stitcher, coming back to you with another floss tube um, all about cross stitch and some recently finished objects, FFOs. Um, I have a little bit of a coronation recap, nothing, nothing too major, um, but I just wanted to say um, it's more Memorial Day weekend and um, so happy Memorial Day. It's time to thank and remember um, our veterans who um, have given the ultimate gift and um, just wanna recognize all the veterans in your lives. Um, so I hope you have a lovely weekend. We're having really great weather here in South Southeastern PA. Um, I'm on the edge of Berks and Lancaster counties. Um, so I'm in a, a really idyllic spot. So, so welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Um, you'll see I'm last time I had my UK pennant celebrating for the coronation and today I have my um, patriotic pennants up for um, the start of our summer season. Um, so I made these last year and it's a lot of fun to um, put them together. So um, just trying to help celebrate the weekend. So I'm going to jump right in with some of my recent um, FFOs that I finished. I really am really happy with how these turned out. I've been wanting to jump into the whole dough bowl scene and um so this is you might recognize um this from the prairie schooler charts that have had this great um resurgence <laughs> and um i changed the colors and um just really love how this turned out i had this has a whole like little opalescent glittery um, theme running through it with the um, opalescent Ada and um, this fabric has some shimmer to it. I used it in a quilt um, and then I carried it through on the back with some more shimmery fabric. Also um, left from some scraps um, that I used in a quilt. So and then I did sew down the the pom-pom trim i'm pretty sure this pom-pom trim i found at a local um fabric store it's a privately owned um store burke holders um burke holders fabric that people may know and um i loved how prominent <laughs> the size of these pom-poms are just a little bit um bigger than what um i've seen with the lady dot um size so very excited about that. This is the first pillow finish for all the um, smalls that I'm doing in this series. So I do have a few more um, finished that need to be now made into pillows. So I'm excited about that. And I did fill it with lizard lit litter. So it does have um, a little bit of a, a nice weight to it, which I love the feel of that. This was the, um, oh gosh, Cherry Hill Stitchery, I believe, the free chart that came out that she provided this year. And um, so I didn't get it finished for Thanksgiving, or for Thanksgiving, for Valentine's Day, um, but I did um, just finish this up. And this is Lady Dot, um, so I want to see if we can do a comparison here. So there is a little bit of a size difference. Um, not sure what the manufacturer is of, of this, but um, this is called Brick. And I was like, oh, do I wanna use that or do I wanna use something that's like a really, you know, true, true red that, that sort of more matches this. This is um, Classic Color Works Cupid. I had to use Cupid for my chart and I love how it turned out. Um, I wasn't sure like how I liked these hearts. Um, they sort of faded a little bit, so I did do some back stitching in the same color of the floss, and I think that helped a little bit. Um, I don't know if I did it for all of them. I think I did it for the little pink ones, 
But yeah, this color is called Brick and I did sew it down, which didn't take too much time. I wasn't quite sure how to handle this little part. And I was like, oh, do you cut that off? Was I supposed to tuck it in? And I thought, no, you know what? It really hugs the pillow and I like it. I like how it came out. I love the little backing fabric. So cute. Um, I picked that up for other purposes. There's a, there's a Valentine's type quilt that's with little envelopes and you sort of do some fussy cutting of um, the colors and fabrics together. I have aspirations to do that. I don't know that I ever will, but of course I have fabric. I mean, I have, you know, um, some specific Valentine's fabric and then other reds and pinks that would go with it. Um, this is a prior finish, but since we're heading into summer, I thought I would get it out again. S'more summer, please. Um, this is an uh, Erica Michaels um, strawberry, and I did this on a 14 count Ada. This would be a picture this plus. Um, I'm not exactly sure which color it is, but um, because it's 14 count, it's pretty big. Um, nice and nice size, but um, you know, I have a strawberry bowl aspiration as well. And you know, this is probably the first one I ever did. I did an Erica Michaels class last summer, which was so fun. It was through um, Needlework Delight um, in New Jersey, Northern New Jersey. And um, I encourage you to go to their website and check out the classes that they have. They have retreats mentioned, and then occasionally they have sporadic classes. They're a little buried on their site, um, so I've really dug in there to see, you know, oh, what, you know, what do they have? And it was nice to do this virtually. Um, and oh, I'm totally forgetting her name, but Erica Michaels, <laughs> designer herself, did the class. And one of the techniques that she taught was when you are sewing your fabric together <clears throat> to create your cone. She talked about not sewing it all the way to the very end when you're doing that cone and you think, oh, I'm gonna sew it all the way to the end like I would any seam. She said, leave like about two stitches undone. And then when you turn the fabric, you get that flatter strawberry touch so that it's not like a perfect ice cream cone shape. It's more like a strawberry. Mine's pretty pointy, but... <laughs> um, and this is supposed to be my little... I did this myself. Um, she talked about in her class cutting um, little pieces from wool. And in the class, it was wonderful. She provided a very high quality print out. I mean, like basically like a little booklet of all sorts of strawberry tops and it's basically from many of her patterns over time but it gives you so many ideas of how to cut little pieces of wool or felt roll them do them into shapes and then simply pin them in so all of this is pinned right now because I used polyfill um, I will need to have to glue them now um, because they do sort of lift out but I just love the little RV my dream would be to have a little Shasta like this refinished and parked in the backyard <laughs> as my little getaway sewing she shed um, we don't own our yard essentially we own the land that our house sits on so uh, don't know that this will ever happen but I can at least have one this size so I'm going to move on. Um, so just a little carnation recap. Um, the last time I was mentioning my some of my carnation plans, um, I showed this little lady. And many of you had such fun comments and nice comments. She is just, I, I just look at this and I can't help but smile. I mean, she's just so cute. And I had mentioned before that I incorporated her purse. She didn't have a purse. She needed a purse. 
And if you really follow the Royals, you, you know that I think this is true, but she would move her purse from one hand to the other to signal she was ready to end her visit, shaking hands, meeting, greeting people, not that she was shaking hands, but, um, and that was her signal that her staff would help her go back inside. <laughs> but she has since been transformed into a pin pillow of sorts. Um, a friend of mine, um, one of my quilt teachers makes, um, pin cushions for us when she, um, holds a retreat and she made one that's more of a vertical style. I don't have it right here in front of me, but it has a scissor holder or a pocket. So I knew I wanted to do that with this, but because the chart is pretty wide and big, I did do it horizontally. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not fully finished yet. Um, but I wanted to show it. So I could put a scissor in here. I think I'm going to try to put, um, I wouldn't have to do this. I could just do a, a needle minder, but a magnet of some kind so that my scissors will hold on here. I have a really cute, um, little scissors that really fits with this theme. Um, and what I've started to do is put polyfill in the corners and down towards the bottom here, but I would like to put the lizard litter in here because then it will have weight to it and I can sit it um, with me when I'm at a retreat and, and I'm actually working at a table or definitely in my stitchy spot to hold down my pattern. I have to sort of <clears throat> change, um, pardon me, I need to have a little sip. <clears throat> my cat dictates how my stitchy setup is going to be for the evening. So um, I have a few different instruments and implements that get moved around based on where he decides he's going to lay. So I don't always have my pattern standing up, it's sometimes laying down, it's sometimes laying on his back. <laughs> so this might help um, hold it down. So very exciting. And this was fabric that I did pick up in England in 2019. I had the pleasure of going there very unexpectedly for a very like once in a lifetime type of week. And um, I was like, I'm going to hit all the fabric shops. Like, do they have fabric shops? Do they have yarn shops over here? So I hit probably more yarn shops were at least in my path where we were at. But I found a really cute fabric shop in Bath and that was before I was cross stitching. I was still doing a lot of quilting. So picked up some delightful um, British fabric there. All right, and so I'm gonna move on to whips now. So my mania has not really gone as I had intended. I had a business trip sprinkle in the middle. I had to sort of get ready for that. And I've been very busy making um, my little favors that I wanna take to StitchCon, which is in less than three weeks, I leave for StitchCon. I am in StitchCon B. So um, come and say hello if you um, are going to StitchCon B. Um, so I've been very busy making um, zipper pulls for people and you kind of trade um, little things that people bring. Some people will have floss tags made. Some people make needle minders and swap those. And so I wanted to do something a little different because there's been like many people that have been now coming to StitchCon for many years. So it's kind of been the same sort of thing. So I came up with a way to do a zipper pull and I'll show that in another video. So the whips, um, actually I'm gonna circle back to continuing my little coordination recap. So I have my little British bag that I made a few years ago. <laughs> um, British inspired. 
So, I was talking about that I was planning on starting the Country Cottage Needleworks afternoon in London chart for the coronation. I had all good intentions of stitching as I watched, but quite honestly, I could barely keep my eyes open. I did get up to watch it, or I, I woke up to watch it. I watched it from my bed, and um, I wanted to have that experience of being able to say that when I would look at my chart, oh my gosh, I can't find my chart. Um, Oh, I was stitching this during the coronation, and that's what um, Nicola Parkman is saying um, she will be able to do because she stitched while watching the coronation. Well, of course, she's over in England and was able to watch at a decent hour <laughs> and, and be stitching while she was watching it. But I did, um, in, in the U.S., if you recall, May 6th, when the coronation was happening, very early in the morning, you had to get up, basically be watching at 5.30 a.m., watch the coronation, and then later that day was the Kentucky Derby. So did the coronation, I took a nap, <laughs> middle of the day, I mean like noonish. My mom went to, she had a birthday party to go to, and then we hopped in the car, took a relative, drove to Delaware Park, which is a casino and racetrack, and watched the Kentucky Derby from there. So it was quite a busy day. <laughs> um, and I was like, what could I stitch for the Kentucky Derby? And I didn't really come up with anything. I did take this stitch with me. Did I actually start it? I don't know if I really did. I don't think I started it at Delaware Park, but this is what I have so far. So this is my start of Big Ben. You know, very exciting stuff. Now, I did actually have a piece of this Witchell um, Water Lily Ada, and it's 14 count. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that, um, I don't know if they used 14 count for the model, but they used this exact same color. Um, so I think mine's going to be just, you know, a smidge bigger. So that's exciting. I'm glad that I actually got that started because I've had this chart for probably about two years or so. I got excited about that um, when I started stitching and saw that and I was still on my high from my England trip. The I, I had said earlier that my mania is not going as planned and what I meant by that was last time I showed Country Cottage Needleworks the sampler series, the calendar sampler series. Um, I have May to finish. I'm pretty close to finishing. I had meant to get that done in May, get it, you know, finished. Hasn't happened. I don't think I even got to work on it. Um, and then I have June that I still need to, I have a lot of June that almost has to be a total restart. Um, so I'm not sure how, how well that's going to go. Um, but the reason for that is I needed to definitely choose my small that I wanted to do for my smalls exchange. I, I thought about this in January. Okay, get started so that you're not rushing. And here we are. I just really had a hard time picking something that I, I wasn't exactly sure what type of chart was, this is bad to say, but was good enough or enough. I thought about doing um, a Lori Holt from her stitch cards. There's a series that she has where there's a big patchwork strawberry, and I thought about doing that one. It probably would have been fine. It'll be great to go to StitchCon and see what other people have actually done. I've been able to find some videos and some pictures, but um, I think once you actually can see it in person, I'll have such a better idea. I'm happy about my what I did pick, though. Um, in a prior floss tube of mine, I showed this part of this series from Little House Needleworks. You'll find that 
these are some of my favorite designers. So she did a Dear Diary series. Um, some of these are from 2018. Oh, this one is Mary Houston uh, Heaton, Mary Heaton. And it's actually from 2005. So um, with this is that small. And she, in this series, um, I'm not sure how many there were, but there were these little pillows and one said friendship, one said mercy, one said patience, that sort of thing. And you could do them all in a full design. So there must've been nine of them. So I am doing this as my small. And so that's one of my whips. Now you take a good look at the colors there. I worked from my stash. Here's my <laughs> lovely mess. Um, now you take a good look at this one. <laughs> Let me know if you notice anything. I was feeling very uneasy the other night when I realized how I decided on my colors. I have this thing about getting very influenced by the name of the color. I love the naming structure of Classic Color Works, which I just recently learned is run and owned by Little House Needleworks designer. Their names are just so cute. And I can get influenced by the name, like a color that might be called Lobster Claw or something like that. And if it correlates to the chart, I somehow in my head, I'm like, oh, well, that'll work because it's called Lobster Claw. Well, no, you still have to really look at the color. So this chart <laughs> was really designed with DMCs. Listen to four of the colors. Gray, green, very dark. Gray, green, medium. Green, gray, dark. Green, gray, medium. <laughs> and I didn't really have, I don't think I had any of those specific colors. So I looked at the chart and I'm like, oh, well, I have some colors that will work. Some of the colors are a little flipped and my flowers are green and my leaves are blue. I'm, I'm over it now. I think it's still very sweet and darling. And I, in my head, in this area, there are hydrangeas that have a green look to them like that. I just, it's fine. I'm going to just relax. It's fine. So anyway, that is my friendship. So I really just have the friendship to put in and then that will be finished and I can sew it into, I don't know if I'm going to do the pillow. I, I have a little um, box that I might mount it on and mount it on that box. Um, I don't know. We'll see. You'll see what, what I do. All right. And my last whip to show you i really have to move along we do have some memorial day plans um okay so i can't show you the chart i'll show you the colors but i am doing the tomato seeds packet um with stitching with the housewives and I am working on a few of these packets. Uh-oh, did I? I might have left the actual stitch downstairs. No, here it is. So this is on, oh, I really like this. This is a Picture This Plus Ada and it's 16 count. Oh gosh, I forget which one this is though. It's one that I feel has some fame to it. It's not like I, I keep thinking of Dirty Teacup, but that's, you know, someone else's line. But anyway, let's focus on the stitching. So um, 
I started this as a small. And for some reason, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So I backed off of it for a small, um, but I'm still going to, I mean, for smalls exchange. But I definitely will finish it and love it. So, but I love the modeling in this um, picture, this plus. So I really have to figure out, oh, my lighting is just kind of very cool today. Um, so I will try to find out the name of that. Okay. So I'm going to move along here and just jump into a little stitch con talk. Um, yeah, three weeks and I will be at StitchCon B, my very first retreat that's purely set up as a retreat, no classes or anything like that. Um, one of the things I really want to do is have one or two, listen to me, you know, two. I definitely want to have one pattern chart close to being finished so that I can finish it there and then I get to ring the bell. I get to ring the finish bell. So if you've not heard about this, I don't know if they're doing this at other of the big retreats that have been happening. There was Stitch North and just recently there was Stitching in the Wild. Um, my friend Kathleen from Snickerdoodle Stitch Floss Tube will be um, our driver <laughs> to get us to Cincinnati and um, she was at those two retreats so I'll have to ask her if she got to ring the bell if they did that but definitely at StitchCon that is an experience and so I want to get one or two charts in place um, that I can do that that will be quite exciting and there's another um, I have to decide which FFO I want to take and put on the brag table so you get to um, if you want to you can share something that you've finished and um, put a little card with it um, describing the item so that'll be exciting um, get to go on the stitchy bus there is a little red and white old school bus that is officially called the Stitchy Bus. It's got its name on the side and we will get to ride over to Keepsakes Shop. I will be torn between shopping and trying to squeeze that little kitty, um, the Black Kitty 310. Um, <laughs> so adorable. So um, in getting ready for StitchCon, you have to arrive in your StitchCon uniform. You don't, but we had an opportunity to order some apparel, so I will be official. I'm very excited at this bright, hot pink. Um, so I think that'll be a good, like it's like a baseball shirt that might be chilly in the hotel. And if it is chilly, I can then also layer with my StitchCon hoodie and I think it's lovely. I love the contrast zipper. Um, it's a lightweight poly blend, um, sort of like a heavier t-shirt material and I thought this would work well for you know, going with outfits throughout the summer. Um, so I'm excited. And I did want to show you something that I made for my retreat experience. Um, people do have sort of like placemats at their seat to just sort of mark off their area so that you know, helps kind of keep people's scissors and things, you know, not from getting um, lost unintentionally. Um, so I made a mat. I made two, actually. Oh, I just dropped one of the things I wanted to show. So this is made with a foam stabilizer in the middle. 
and I quilted it. Um, it's larger than a standard placemat, so it might be a little large. I might have to turn it this way on the table. They, they should be round tables. And um, this is Blackbird fabric on the back. Could be the front, too. So I um, have a little hook <laughs> type of um, thing pinned here. Um, so that I could attach my floss rings and let the floss be here. I use, um, I'll take this stand with me. It's pretty portable um, to hold up my charts. I will be using my Halo Daylight and that'll sit on here. And hold please, I'm going to show you something else. Okay, and I'm back. So maybe about two weeks ago, this is a chip clip that broke. It's got a fabulous magnet still in it. It You can hang it on the fridge. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I broke off the other part and I'm going to cover this in batting, cover it in fabric, and I'm going to sew it this is the other mat. <laughs> I've switched mats now. Um, is it upside down? It might be upside down. Yes. I totally forget her name, but many of you have seen this type of fabric being made into project bags. So um, I will cover this in fabric and actually sew it onto the mat. Um, and then I have scissor holder needle minder you know like i need more of that because my little metal stand <laughs> will take care of that so but i just got really into it and that's what it's all about all right so i'm gonna move on now to um a little bit of haul and also a little bit of Silly Notions segment. Um, talk about that in a minute. So a few weeks ago, um, Mother's Day weekend, I had the chance to finally get to Woodbridge Dry Goods, which is outside of Kutztown. It probably has a Kutztown address, Kutztown, PA. I went to Kutztown University and hi to my fellow alum that um, commented for me. Um, it was great to um, hear from you. And um, I will be returning to that store. I can't believe I haven't gotten there sooner. So it's owned by a Mennonite family and Mennonite fabric stores just find cool stuff. Like <laughs> it's just so different than a Michael's, Joann's and a, and a larger box sort of fabric experience. Um, they were having a sale that day and they had some carts outside with fabric that was really marked down so I picked this up so this is milk caps um, on fabric I'm gonna see this is called down on the farm by Robert Kaufman so because it was on sale it's probably an older fabric um, but I thought project bag so that will be fun um, they had some, you know, different types of ribbons there um, that I wouldn't normally find anywhere else. So I picked up, I think, like two yards of this. This is actually like, it's almost like bias, it's bias tape, but, um, you know, it'll have many uses for finishing. Um, definitely needed I was trying to figure out how I'm going to finish the edging on Miss Queen here so I do want to do um, something in red so I saw this cording and of course there's always rickrack now downstairs I totally forgot that I had already purchased a roll from Hobby Lobby of red velvet cording and it's basically going to be like this, but it's velvet. So she's getting velvet treatment, I'm pretty sure. 
while I was there, um, I my mother spotted this. She is amazing for spotting things before I do in things that I would like. So she and I are going to be starting the second series, more of an intermediate class of Pennsylvania Dutch, learning the Pennsylvania Dutch language. We start May 30th and she found um, there was a box of charts um, that had different hex symbols. Um, it was interesting to hear uh, that Nancy from the Disorderly Stitcher, and I'm going to get to meet her at StitchCon, just recently talking about, you know, I don't really know too much about hex signs and things, and I'm actually learning a little bit more myself now in adulthood. Um, I have to be honest, like, the hex signs on barns in the area, I just took them for granted, thought that every barn had them. Then I would hear the word hex, and I would be like, what's that all about? Like, it was a little scary to me, but it really, these designs were sort of meant to be good luck, even though the word is hex. <laughs> um, it's to ward off um, evil and ward off bad things and try to bring in the good. So you have a distal fink. Distal fink is the bird that... Um, is on this design and it had a heart. There were a few different designs and these go back to 1995. Someone in the local area of Reading um, put these kits together. And what I really liked on the back was they tell the story that I'm learning in these classes that really clear up. Many people still think that only the Amish are Pennsylvania Dutch or only the Mennonite are Pennsylvania Dutch or all Pennsylvania Dutch people are Amish and that's not the case um, in the time of what was the immigration of the Pennsylvania Dutch people only five percent of that whole population came over as Amish so um, the rest were Lutheran that was the prominent um, faith of that group of people and that's that's my heritage so that's why my mom and I are taking classes and um, through that I'm also trying to study a little bit more of the samplers that um, were done at that time and by those people and just trying to dig into that one of the samplers that I showed in a previous um, video is of someone who would have been Pennsylvania Dutch and I'll I'll be showing that again so anyway um, I'll be working on this I don't love <laughs> the primary colors of Pennsylvania Dutch designs um, so I will be borrowing from Nicola Parkman's hands across the sea she recently promoted a new sampler that was um, an alphabet with a variety of colors and they had primary colors but they were softer so I think I want to look at that chart again and maybe just borrow some of the blues and reds and that sort of thing the other thing that I think about is like in these modern times or just the stitchy creativeness that we've come up with how would this be if it was a one color um, how would this be as a one color in a variegated thread? So I'm taking that into consideration too, um, of what I want to do. The bummer of this, this was pretty pricey to me. I mean, it's a kit, it's a kit, but it was like $18. Well, I opened it up and it's got this cardboard in it. So this has sat for what 25 years now or so and so talk about natural modeling the ada is spotted and i just kind of laughed to myself like here we are we try to dye fabric to sort of make it look like this but when i look at it i'm like i don't like it but it's because i picture this to be a pure white background so we'll see what we do i can always dye this fabric um, in my final segment here, 
I will give a shout out ode to my grandmother who was definitely Pennsylvania Dutch, spoke Pennsylvania Dutch. She and my grandfather would speak Pennsylvania Dutch in front of me so that I didn't know what was being argued about. <laughs> but I still hold on to her bonnets. My mom pointed these out to me a few years ago and um, she wore these heavily to do laundry, be out in the sun before uh, sunscreen. These are fabrics that were definitely flower sack fabrics. Maybe, I don't know that this would have been flower sack fabrics, but reused and yet the Pennsylvania Dutch are known to decorate, to take what's utilitarian and decorate it and make it nice. So a wooden spoon, um, a coffee pitcher, um, a sunbonnet. And here's another one. This I think is definitely probably flower sack fabric. You can even see um, like the printing is a little strange. Um, and it makes me wonder if this was sewn on the um, treadle old sewing machine that we have. We still have it. So, oh, and it's got a little flap on the back to keep the sun off her neck. So these are the things I miss because at the time that I would have been here with her where she was here with me, we didn't have this sewing interest in common. Um, so I feel like I missed out a little bit. This was her apron an actual flower sack material or 30s material and she's got her little rick rack she took the time to do some rick rack on there love it all right so i'm going to leave you with that in my little silly notions segment and i wish you a really happy memorial day weekend Stay safe and um, hope to come back soon with a little um, maybe special segment on getting ready for StitchCon. So um, happy stitching. Take care. Bye.